This is my new ghost mantis, and for the past week I've been enjoying observing and interacting with her. You guys already know I love frogs, but one of my other favorite animals is mantises. I've been keeping some for 6-7 to seven years now, but I've never kept anything quite like this. And I'm actually planning on getting two more. Not sure what kinds yet, but I know one of them is going to be an orchid mantis. For me, mantises are some of the coolest animals on the planet, and in this video I'll be showing how I made a custom stand, as well as custom enclosures for all three of them. I only have the ghost mantis now because that's all I could find, but this will be a two-part series on how I made their enclosures. Part 1 will be the stand and the enclosures themselves, and part 2 will be the background and planting. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll start by building the stand. For that, I need to cut four 2x4s to 5 feet. I measured for the correct length, and then cut the pieces. I then repeated this three more times. I also cut six more pieces that are about two and a half feet long, as well as another six that are about a foot long. Once I had all the pieces cut, I started to assemble them with screws. I started by attaching one of the two and a half foot pieces to one of the five foot pieces. I then added another two and a half foot piece near the bottom and one in the middle. After that, I used the remaining five foot piece and put it on the other side. I then repeated this process to get two identical frames. After making both the frames, I secured them together with the one foot boards. I put these on the bottom of all the two and a half foot ones. After assembling all of the pieces, I went on to cut some 1 8 inch thick wood. Then I went on to attach it to the stand using a nail gun. This stuff is very smooth so it won't need much sanding. Once the whole stand was covered in paneling, I proceeded to paint it. Luckily it only ended up needing one coat. Once I had it painted and moved into place, that completed the stand. Now it's time to work on the custom enclosures. I'll start by removing the bottom piece of glass. To do that, I'll smash it with a hammer. I know it sounds like there'd be better methods to do this, but this is the only one that's worked for me so far. Once the bottom was removed, I went on to make a screen lid. To do that, I'll take some window screen frame and mark where to cut. After marking it, I then went on to cut it. I then measured for the other three pieces and cut them as well. After that I assembled all the pieces together and then started to attach the window screen with spline. Once I was finished with that, I went on to test fit it into the tank. Everything looked good, so I went on to permanently attach it. To do that, I'll be using 100% silicone. I applied it to all four sides in between the glass and the screen. Then I smoothed everything out with my finger. The next step is to cut some glass for the substrate area. I cut two sets of identical pieces. Then I went to test fit everything to make sure they all fit. Again, everything looked good, so now I can permanently attach them. I'll start by adding on some tape, making sure to leave a gap near the edge. I did this on both sides for all six pieces. I then ran a bead of silicone along the rim of the tank and pressed the glass into place. I ran another bead along the top and smoothed it out with my finger. With all that finished, the next step will be to make the door. I'll start by making the hinges. For that, I'll cut a wooden dowel. I made one cut about two inches long, and then I cut it in half. After cutting the piece in half, I drilled a hole in each of them. Keep in mind that as I'm doing this, I'm doing three enclosures at once, so I have to triple everything. Anyway, once the holes were drilled, I super glued a nail into one side and put the other side on the nail. You can see here that both the sides move freely, and it should create a pretty good hinge. To make sure that the door opens smoothly, I'll round off all the edges. Here you can see the final hinge. Now I need to attach it to the enclosure. I cut a piece of polycarbonate for the door, and then I marked for where to put the hinge. I cut the silicone in that area, and then used super glue to attach the hinge. I repeated this process for both sides on all three enclosures. Then I super glued a handle to each door. To make sure the door stays shut, I'll use some magnets. I'll start by sawing out an area in the rim where I can attach magnets. 
Normally I would use latches, but for something this small magnets should do just fine. Once the area was cut out, I super glued the magnets in place. To add the magnets to the door, I simply drilled a few holes in it and super glued the magnets in place. Then I went on to paint the hinges. In hindsight, I probably should have done this before attaching them. Anyway, with the hinges painted, that completes this part of the project. I'm really happy with the way everything looks, and it also functions really well. There's not a whole lot to talk about in this part of the project, but it was a necessary step in completing it. Either way, I can't wait to finish these enclosures, get more mantises, and get them home. Part 2 should be out in a week or two, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite kind of mantis is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.